Okay, so hi everyone and hi Ollie. So I'm going to be doing my presentation on my KMTV experience. Um, as you can see on the first slide, let's get one up top here. Um, it says work experience to full time intern because that's exactly what has happened. I did my placement, as you know, and I became one of their full time interns, and it's been a crazy and amazing experience. And in this presentation, I'm going to be talking about my experience with KMTV. Okay, so who are KMTV? So KMTV is a unique partnership between the KM Group and the University of Kent. Who are the KM Group, you might be asking? Well, the KM Group, formerly known as Kent Messenger Group, is a multimedia company within Kent that looks after everything to do with media and its outlets within Kent. So that's the radio station, that's the newspaper, the local newspapers, and now they look after KMTV. And in terms of the partnership, of it being a partnership between the University of Kent, that is evident in how KMTV operates. The studio itself is located, located on the University of Kent Medway campus. And in terms of their um, staff, they employ so many interns. I want, <laughs> don't have the exact figure, but a lot of interns, um, I would say over, because it's like, there's so many, I think there's like at least 20, I don't even know half of them, um, and a lot of them uh, go on to become full-time staff, so students are really at the heart of KMTV and what they produce. KMTV is um, one of the county's first news channels uh, within um, the county, it's the first news channel within the county, and it was launched in July 2017. They currently are on Freeview Free number 7 and on Virgin 159. And they have an online platform on Facebook and YouTube and also on their um, website. You can currently check out their live stream whenever they're broadcasting live. And um, whenever they have their news shows, it will always be uploaded to a website. I would know as that's one of my duties as an intern. So let's meet the team. Okay, so it does take a village, it really does. Um, so as you can see in the PowerPoint, the person in the middle is Andy Richards, he's the editor-in-chief. He's responsible for the managerial position in terms of the station and overseeing the station and he's, al he's always busy um, because he's always in meetings and, and, you know, brokering deals and trying to elevate KMTV to get to, you know, high heights. And then you have the people that look after the show itself, as you can see they're in the little bubbles on the... Um, um, next to Andy. Um, the, the person of most importance there is Louisa Britton, who's a senior editor, senior news editor, who's responsible for um, producing the Kent Tonight Show, which is the new show. And um, everybody else in the bubble, they are reporters who either look after sport news or local affairs or polit political news. And Louisa's job is to fact check and to make sure, you know, the stories are in on time because they have a, I think they have a 4 o'clock or 5 p.m. deadline for when things are supposed to be in so the show can run smoothly. And then we also have um, KM, KMTV's Creative Production Unit, which, which is a unit that looks after everything but news. So um, they do external shoots for clients. If a certain uh, a school within the university want to create a series of videos, um, often or in the past, from what I've seen, they go to KMTV for, so KMTV can produce content for that school. For example, I have uh, was I think two months ago or last month I went out on a shoot and it was for the School of Business and they wanted a series a talk uh, to be filmed about inclusivity within the business environment and I was one of the um, staff people working filming that shoot editing the package and sending it to the School of Business for them to distribute however they please. So let's get into the shows that KMTV produce. So. That what you have is the Kent Tonight News Show, which is what you have any standard news show that's out there really covering entertainment, local affairs, current affairs, um, entertainment, you name it. But it is only surrounding the idea of Kent. And if anything is national, they always bring it back to how it relates to Kent. You have Team Talk, which is a show um, that discusses sporting news. They bring on like any local athletes and they talk about things like boxing or Jules FC is something that I've heard of every single day when I'm there. Um, so everything related to sport. We have the same thing, but with a business show. So they talk about anything business related happening within the uh, local community and in the local county and how it relates and affects businesses and consumers. You have Based in Kent, which is basically a tuned down version of um, like your BBC Radio 1 where you get uh, musicians, but they originate and are from Kent and they perform. And then you have Born on Politics, which is a show about the political uh, system. Um, 
shout out political system, shout out about the politics and like I just said previously and they discussed the political news and how it affects, um, you know, people in the community. So, <clears throat> they did have pre-existing show, pre shows and um, it was, one of them was hashtag Kent Says, which was a Vox Pop style segment um, where the people of Kent would answer questions posed by us. And I say us, I mean KMTV staff. When I say KMTV staff, I mean interns. So I literally had to go out and ask people questions on Chatham High Street, Rochester High Street, and it was, and I put a massive smiley face here because it, I'm glad it was canceled. <laughs> because it was such, it was just the worst thing. And I, I don't need to go into any more detail because people can be mean. People can be really mean. So I'm glad it was uh, cancelled. And the fact that um, they changed, they don't do it anymore, just shows how, you know, a station or, or a company will always change things up to keep things fresh and to keep things in style. Okay, so how does KMTV relate to the news industry? Well, it take, like I said, it takes the standard format of a news show on their flagship show, Kent Tonight, and they have they discuss sporting news, entertainment news, and business news, and current affairs. But then they also, like many media outlets, they operate on many different platforms, whether that's them online, on their website, like I said, but also on their social media. So them, you know, po they post uh, highlights of their stories on Twitter, they post um, highlights of the show on Facebook, not the full show on Facebook, but they post like little snippets and things that are like worthy news stories. Um, but then, unlike any other regional news shows, Kent Tonight only focuses on what happens in Kent, and it's made for Kent by Kent. And channel director at the time, um, James Brindle, said, local TV is a win-win-win. So what he meant by that is that KMTV is a TV show, it's a local station, but at the end of the day, local businesses and local people of Kent um, all profit from KMTV being in existence. Businesses that are in Kent, they can't pay high street prices to get their product to be advertised on TV. So if local TV is exists, they can they can go to KMTV and say, hey, produce this advert for us. And James Brindle said that um, your advert will look as good as any network, but you're not paying anywhere near that level. If you're a Kent business and you're not interested in customers in Sussex or Surrey, you can come to us. A lot of businesses want you to take care of their whole needs. Some want you to make adverts, some want you to manage their social media, some want you to give out street teams and give out flyers. They want a solution and KMTV is in a, an incredible position to offer that and you definitely see that. We have many adverts. Um, Johnson's, Johnson's Beds is one of them. Um, yeah, so KMTV is in an incredible position to um, help local businesses advertise and um, it's a win-win-win. The consumers win, the businesses win because they now have an advertising outlet and the consumers win because they now get great content, local content that affects them. Ooh, that was a lot of words. Okay, so moving on. So on this next footage, I've got five minutes left. On this next footage, um, I have a mood board which sometimes it makes you wonder, this is what my life is when I get a job. It's like, oh, it's great. But then you're like, oh, I just want to quit. So I created my own um, business progress chart. Um, I think, uh, like a lot of people said, came to be was had its moments. Um, and mine definitely has been an upward curve. For example, in September when I started, I was a bit like, you know, I was a bit like, oh, this is a bit nerve wracking. Um, you know, I just, I was like, Andy promised I'd be on TV, I've been to the Baptist, but yeah, I'm here, behind the scenes. But then things got better, I remember, I, I started to do Upward Slope because it was in October, that's when I got hired. And in November, things started to get better, I started to be, um, you know, getting the swing of things, and, you know, people really enjoyed my social chats. Um, and in December, I put a tongue out face because that's when I felt like I was really getting into hang of it. I was going to work once a week. Um, I was getting enlisted for um, amazing projects, as you know, Ollie. Um, and then in January, um, we start the new year with an incredible shoot. I wasn't in the newsroom anymore. I got an upgrade just for that uh, two weeks where we would uh, spend uh, work um, going to different places within um, Ken and filming. Um, and then in February, I got enlisted in the production um, team where I would um, do different shoots. I would help, like I was saying about the business, I would go out on clients, with, uh, I would go out for clients and film and edit packages and interpret briefs 
brief send send it back to them have more information in the next slide of what I did and in March I just put a you know the slip keeps going up and I just put a smiley face because it's even though the coronavirus has ruined everything it's still been pretty great so my experience so far as you can see these are my different roles that I do as a production intern I assist on external shoots when needed I've been a camera operator for live broadcasts I edit packages on Final Cut Pro cutting clips, interpreting briefs and music sourcing and basic colour correction and I also contribute to the social media which is something that I take upon myself to do um, it's not something they necessarily ask but I just in my if I'm on a shoot I'm like oh I'm like Cameron can I create content and he's like yeah sure like post on Instagram and that has been really helpful you know really it helps it helps people know what the cool things that KMTV do and I'm glad I can contribute to that um, and then here are some of the things that I do as a journalist um, partake in scripted and non-scripted two-way discussions on TV which is social chat and KM chat I find and source these stories for the social chat and the KM chat and I edit these videos for social media whether that's um, uh, on Facebook, Instagram, on Twitter, and I do some guest managing, which is looking after guests and making sure they feel welcome. So here's an example of my work with uh, Social Chat. Just gonna play that. So my second story is that today actually Twitter was down. It was a hashtag that was trending. Whoa, this is insane. Humpback well <laughs> spotted in the River Thames. I hope this lost Leviathan finds its way back to the open sea. Seagulls are like the bane of all of our existence here in Kent. And a shop owner actually had to fork out 400 pounds because people are trying to like throw stuff to like, you know, destroy the seagull. So uh, something else that was trending on social media was spooky as well. It was a hashtag, things you were never meant to know. So we see the cows, it's so cold outside that the cows are blocking to car engines to get. It's pancake day, so it's a wonderful day where we get to celebrate pancakes and our friends over at KMFM were setting the fire alarm off whilst they were making pancakes. Which like Yeah, we were talking about this earlier and, and you disagreed with my option because yeah. I said just lemon and sugar, which I think we that. have here, although that <laughs> pancake looks really wrong. I didn't think it looked that bad. I don't know, it looks a bit burnt. Yeah, it does. But it looks more like an omelette. <laughs> <laughs> but lemon and sugar lemon and sugar is a bit basic. Yeah, but I that's what makes it quite nice. Well, you can get Nutella, peanut butter, fruit. I think there's a fruit mm. one that's going to come Yeah, but the Nutella is just a bit stodgy, isn't it? I like the, the, I like the zestiness of But then the worst one of them all is, and it's going to come up soon, is oh, the no, ketchup I'm this. pancake. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> it's the ketchup pancake. It's National Chocolate Day, and it's Monday as well. So, uh, yeah, it's a day for people who love chocolate to celebrate chocolate guilt-free and so I wanted to ask you Keelan Go what's on. your favourite chocolate? Favourite chocolate a little bit controversial it is actually Milky Way which um, I don't really know why what's in the inside? There's so many people what is that? Caramel? I don't know it's, no it's not caramel it's just some kind of it's weird <laughs> nice texture as well yeah, I'd say. yeah weird but, um, texture what would you go for? Um, I like Snickers. I Snickers. really like Snickers, yeah. That's I like a them all. Terrible shell. I can't pick a favourite. That's like a bouncy. It's Snickers is Milky Way with nuts in it, it's the same thing. Well, I don't, don't think that's quite right. <laughs> kind of like some of the food. Okay. Or like which, which, champagne. I'm not a huge fan okay, of champagne, cool. so that's not super great. I was gonna say Christmas crackers. I just don't see the point of them. Yeah. The jokes are absolutely appalling. Terrible. The I crown's a bit of waste on my paper. head. It's just yeah. not meant not to relate it to the cartoon Dennis the Menace, which I didn't watch. Did you watch it? <laughs> this was one of my favourites by Art. Yeah, Art really good dress that, quite extravagant. This is even more extravagant. I did see this one actually. Looks like my nan's lampshade. It's just, I love it though. Like, why not? That I'll go. We'll see you straight after the break. Okay, so my personal development with KMTV, honestly, KMTV has helped me so much in terms of my IT and technical skills. Um, for example, I do editing. Um, I'm just going to leave this there because it's really inhibiting me from speaking. Um, for example, I do a lot of editing with KMTV now that I do the production unit and the things I've learned in terms of visuals and cutting stuff together and interpreting a brief that Cameron, the producer, gives me and then I do what he tells me to do and then he'll tell me, oh, like, do something else or like do this or oh, that was good but also add this. Like, it's helped me grow so much and, um, and everything I've learned with sound, editing and colour correcting. I don't know if you know Ollie but that stuff, like, I in the past when I would have to do it, I oh, if it's in a, my personal project, I would be like, I'm not a sound person, I'm not a colour person, 
don't want to do it, I will pay someone to do it. But now me doing it at KMTV has taught me so, so, so much. Um, and it's helped me uh, understand how to do these things in terms of sound and colour. And also to um, apply that to my own work. Personal skills... Honestly, I think the one thing that has that I can take away, if I could just wrap sum up this uh, personal skills um, in a you know nutshell, it would be the fact that Andy believes in me. You know, it's to, to, to know that somebody believes in my worth. For example, there's a documentary that you know um, they were producing, and he believes in me to produce and present that documentary, and he gave me the app that opportunity, and I'm just like, mate, like. I just, I just be doing, I don't, I just, I'm just being me and it's the fact that I have something to offer and that has just boosted my confidence and I will take it into the working world and whether I stay at KMTV or I don't stay at KMTV, like, it's just so nice to know. Um, in terms of my planning, planning and organisational skills, um, punctuality, don't come for me please, I'm sorry I was late to some of, most of your lectures, but in terms of KMTV and other things, um, it has taught me because it was one shot of us you had to get. If you missed that, it's a wrap. So I'll always make sure to get that bus. And just the idea of just getting up and dressing up to go to work just made me um, really happy. Um, and in terms of my social skills, um, communicating with colleagues in the workplace and just, you know, building a rapport to them. Some of the interns, like, we just have the best conversations and just to have a work, to, to meet people and have a work relationship with them, but also take that and mould it into um, a friendship. And also to go from when you're first starting out, you know, these new colleagues of yours to, you know, your actual colleagues and then, you know, a work associate to your friend. Like, that's something that I've been able to, you know, develop and a skill of taught in terms of people skills that I will take within me to the working world and um, also just teamwork and skills you know I can't say that everybody's my best friend in the office I have had you know one or two people that I work with that we do have a bit of personal history but I've learnt and I've had the experience of not letting that history or any personal problems influence your work because at the end of the day like that doesn't speak much about your character and it's not fruitful in the workplace so I've been challenged um, you know to um, you know, I've been challenged in that way and I've had to, you know, rise above the pettiness and be professional so I've definitely grown as a person in terms of that and also just working in the newsroom has just made me become better informed and just more educated. I was not someone who did social media or did news before or read the news much but when you work in the newsroom it's in your ear all the time and because of this I'm able to have more intelligent conversations and talk about Brexit and politics and the coronavirus in a way that I probably wouldn't do um, had I not been working in a newsroom. Okay, so um, in terms of my future career and how KMTV has helped me, I'm just going to move the slide. Obviously it's given me transferable skills and the knowledge of live television. And I say this because when you even though it, it is it's not it's not the most, you know, it's not the BBC, but it's a great format of how live television operates, how you have things like talk back and how, you know, you have this group of people that make a show happen. Everything I've learned through working at KMTV has has felt like has given me a foundational knowledge of what it is like what it will be like or what it might be like to work in a newsroom and it's definitely um it's it's inspiring because it's like I I like this I like this environment I would love to work in this environment um and and like I said it's given me a renewed sense of confidence knowing that I do have talent and I do have worth and you know that I can that I am you know that I I'm talented you know and it's been really nice uh, to have that and that's a great confidence boost that will definitely take forward with me and everything I've learned you know with the editing wise in terms of my organisational skills knowing you know. Having a job itself and, and planning around that, not the other way around and saying, oh, I can't do this because of my job or, you know, let me cancel my job. It's no, you know, you have a job, you, have, you are on a contract and let me work around that. So I've learned so much with my placement at um, KMTV and I'm really, really happy for the confidence boost that it's given me. And yeah, I feel like I don't want to leave. I can't wait till this is all over and I can go back to work with my... Um, work family but yeah that's been my presentation on KMTV I really hope you enjoyed it and yeah that's it thank you thank you for listening